first, you know, obviously, um, good saying thanks uh, to Coach Martin for uh, coming out this way. Um, didn't really have to, you know, but sometimes, you know, within relationships, that's how you find games of that caliber. Um, um, especially with the role he got ahead of us as well. So I appreciate him coming out. Um, uh, more importantly, I actually appreciate the talk that we had uh, the night before, um, just in his role as a, as a mentor uh, for me. But, you know, tonight um, I told our guys I thought this was a very smart uh, performance uh, by us, and I thought we did a great job adjusting a little bit uh, on the fly. Uh, defensively and offensively um, and I thought you know we had some great leadership out there from uh, JJ, Maldo, Nye and even Mueller on the bench I thought was uh, tremendously huge um, you know did our best trying to match their physicality rebound the basketball and it was good to see Jake uh, kind of get back to uh, making shots so Happy for our guys uh, in the moment, but at the same time, I told them it's still just one uh, victory. It's not five. So we still have to have the right mentality when we're coming into practice to continue to get better. And, and the other thing I told them was I appreciated the way we've approached practice, uh, you know, given the start. Um, uh, so, so, so I'm happy uh, at the same time, but you know, long season, still got some work to do. You guys don't have Austin. Brandon fouls out in it's eight minutes in the first half, and JJ and uh, Hunter both have two fouls. I mean, how, how did you guys kind of piece it together against the physicality that they had? Well, you know, our, our biggest thing to them was, uh, you know, it was about the fight. Yeah. And, you know, I, I showed them a clip of one of um, South Carolina uh, former I mean, opponents that they played. And I saw this kid, he might have been like 5'10. And he was in there just fighting, you know. And my thing to them, that has nothing to do with athleticism. That's all heart at the end of the day. So I was talking to our guys from a physicality standpoint, from a rebounding standpoint, to play with their hearts um, and not worry about how big they are, but just continue to fight. Um, they still out-rebounded us, but I, I thought the fight was there. Even with Brandon uh, fouling out in the first half, you know, sacrificial lamb, I guess, at the end of the day. Uh, but uh, also playing smart, J.J. and Thompson, um, in the sense of not giving up a cheap foul at the end of the day. I'd rather than give up two rather than a foul. Um, but again, I, I just thought, I thought they played smart basketball. Playing smart coach, but what was the difference, you know, in the first half? I mean, you're only down four, but you know, the foul trouble thing, you know, he had turnovers and you mentioned the rebounding. What was the biggest difference in the second half was, and maybe what were some of those adjustments that you made? Were you able to outscore him by 13 and, and pull away and get this? Well, uh, I thought when they had the, um, the double post um, in their zone offense, I thought it was kind of giving us some trouble. Uh, our five kept coming up way too quickly. Uh, I was willing to live with uh, their big shooting at mid-range jump shot. But at halftime, I thought we just adjusted it uh, in the sense of uh, to stop bumping and almost kind of matched a little bit out of it. You know, our deal was on the three-man side, we wouldn't bump. On the four-man side, we would. So we would try to keep the four-man matched up with one of the bigs and let the other big dive to our five. And in that process, we were able to stay in some of those gaps to where we got a few deflections and caused turnovers um, that allowed us to kind of play a little bit. Uh, and then offensively, I just thought we were patient. I thought, you know, J.J. did what J.J. does. And I thought they lost Jake a couple of times. And uh, he made him pay, you know, shooting, shooting the basketball. You see, like, Jake didn't uh, rush it or push it as much this time, that he, he was in much more control of what he was trying to do. Is that fair? Well, yes, because we, we set him down as a staff. Um, when we got back from Evansville, uh, might even talk to him again out in Northern Colorado. But our thing to him was he almost has to approach the game like JJ in a different way. Like, how are they playing you? Uh, because regardless of the fact that you've seen us play or not, if you look at the stat sheet, that's the guy that shoots the threes. So we have to be able to take him out. And our thing to him was that's still a good thing. You're being guarded. 
so it opens up the floor even a little bit more for JJ, where he has to, or where I thought he did a great job of just being patient with his opportunity, and then when it came, taking advantage of it. Uh, outside of the two quick ones with like four minutes left, when it was about time to score, I thought he did a great job moving without the basketball, and I thought uh, the guys did a great job finding him. So, Alan. Seems like Taylor mm -hmm. um, is maturing quite a bit. Yeah, With yeah. Mueller out, yeah. how important is that going to be? He's, um, again, I, mean, I think he's just taking strides. You know, uh, we always joke about this because he didn't really have a good summer. Uh, and it was due to probably more so to conditioning. But when we had that break and he went home and came back, he came back in shape. So he did something. And even watching him, the one thing we said as a staff is, we could put him out there with four returning guys, and he's not going to hurt you. He can play within that. And he has an ability, ability to score the basketball. He's kind of work on the free throws, but and he has a really good basketball IQ. Um, the only thing I really yell at him about is just opening his mouth. He's just a quiet kid, you know. And, and uh, I got over one time about calling the cut it through, and he's like, I said it. I said, don't you say it loud enough or without any urgency. But I think he has uh, a chance to be really good as well um, because he's somewhat of a tweener, uh, a guy that can be a skill four, but at the same time be a three man uh, as well. You, you harped a lot on one of this team to be engaged defensively for 40 minutes. Was that one of your better efforts all things? I, I thought so. I thought so. Um, and again, I just love it when they're talking to each other about defense. And I want to say in the second half, um, you know, because we keep stats and when we stop them three times in a row, and we consider those kills. And I just want to say we got eight of them. So when you put together back-to-back uh, -to -back possession or eight of you know, three stops in a row, you're giving yourself a chance. So, you know, like we've been harping on them is, guys, our offense is going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We got one of the best players in the league, best players in the country, to be honest with you. Like, we'll find a way to score the basketball. And even with Thompson, you know, like I told him, I know he was only one for five, but the threat of him shooting that opens the floor for JJ as well, even more. So the offense is going to be there. We just got to be better on defense uh, consistently. In the, like I told them, the number 64, that's a good number for us. When it gets higher and we talk about 80s, high 70s, that's not a good night for us. Uh, I know it's, you know, you, there's work and practice to be done, but you've got about six days before your next game. Is this? I'm saying it's a bye week, so to speak, but is it nice to have a little bit of time, whether you're in the gym working or giving guys rest or whatever, is this a good time to have a little time off before your next game? Well, it's good to win going into six days off, to be honest with you. Um, but, no, I mean, our high-minute guys, we, we, we got to get them some rest. Uh, but yet, you know, the guys that um, are not playing as much, they still got to work out, you know. Um, so there's a process, and sometimes kids don't understand that, you know, you know, and say, why is he resting when I got to work? And I always like to say, hey, I've been there too, you know. When I was playing, Tony Delph, Walter McCarty, who we just played against, they had some rest days. I had to work, you know. So I don't feel sympathy, you know, at the end of the day. Like, we're trying to get better, and that's a process within you getting better. And for the other guys, they need the rest. Now, they'll come in and probably shoot some free throws, probably less on weights, but, you know, probably less less on the floor uh, and mixing it up uh, even once we start back on the floor with how hard we go versus uh, how hard we would do it without non-contact. Uh, you, you guys have lost four or five. You lose another body in Austin. you got a power five team coming in here. Just what does this win can it do for morale, do you think? Um, well, the one thing I, I, I would say Gosh, I don't see just I don't see no defeat in our guys. You know, when even when, well when Tom or when Mueller went down, it was a you know again you know type of mentality. But you know, getting Maldo back in a sense of being closer or the best he's been in a sense of being to a hundred percent. You know, mentally, you know that helps JJ out because I know how much respect he has for Maldo. Um, but it does help our morale uh, at the end of the day. But you know, I, I thought our guys came in with the mindset of, you know, we're capable, you know, uh, and 
like I would always tell our guys, that's how we prepare. You know, no disrespect to the other team, but you know, you still have to play 40 minutes. And quite frankly, you know, I would tell guys, guys, outside of Oregon State, we've been in every game, so it's not like we're getting blown out. You know, we're we're fighting, and tonight the chips fell a little bit better our way because of making shots, and then JJ being who JJ is. Did Bowman O seem to think that uh, the six days he'll be where he's supposed to be normal? Ah, yes. Do you think, is well, this the type of thing that he can come back normal? or is it yeah. going to be Well, you him? know, I, he, he said, I mean, we kept him out, uh, what's the day, Wednesday? We kept him out uh, Tuesday after he had the injection and incision or whatever. Um, and then he went through shoot around. And I asked him, he said, Coach, I'm good. You know, I feel like, feel great. Like the steroid, I guess, it kicked in. Um, he, I didn't think he uh, had it from a point standpoint, but man, he was down there battling, you know, those guys, you know, he's undersized. So his sacrifice today was, well, maybe I don't need to score it as much, but I got to be able to get in here and mix it up with these guys so that we can have a chance at rebounding the basketball. But I think these six days definitely will help a guy like him uh, as he continues to go back, but this is the best he's felt. Uh, since going through those uh, spasms. Do you have a choice but to try to get Brandon some minutes? Yeah, well, it, it was always in the plan yeah. uh, to get him out there. It was just, I, and I know we just lost Mueller, but with this group, it's probably been the most consistent. Like, at least, when I say consistent, I shouldn't say consistent. What I mean by that is you had Thompson, who's now back on the floor. This is his third game back, I think. Uh, JJ's been JJ, and now you have Maldo. So those three have been complete, so to speak. So even going forward, even before Knott gets back, it's, it's, it's in the plans mm -hmm. to get him out there. Now today he just had to kind of get five. You know, that was just, I mean, I didn't want to put Thompson back out there to get a third um, uh, going into halftime.